everyone. Hey, Vet. Hey, Joe. Oh, my goodness. We have got a jam-packed episode in store for you today. Where do we begin? I don't know, but we're heading off all around the state. It's unreal what's happened since we last saw you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. What's in store first? Well, first up, we're going to hear from one of our STEM.T4L leaders out on the road. And we're also going to hatch up with a school in a very unusual location. And then we're going to explore some amazing offerings from some of our partners. Head into the lab, and then we're going somewhere special. Yvette, we're going on safari. OMG. It's over to Andrew now from our STEM.T4L team. He's going to show you some of the great resources on offer and talk you through how to get the most out of your kit. STEM.T4L in its simplest way is an amazing New South Wales experience in which we offer a slew of different devices, resources and personal development to make sure that students and teachers can be upskilled in technology and making sure that they can implement that in their day-to-day -day learning environments. My role at STEM.T4L is that I ensure that teachers have the skills and the abilities to utilise the equipment that we offer through STEM.T4L to make sure that they can transfer that into the Australian workforce. I'll normally go out to a school and offer some kind of personal learning. We love getting hands on with the students and engaging with the teachers and making sure that they can use the technologies offered by STEM.T4L in their teaching pedagogy. We have six different kits at the moment at STEM.T4L, everything from PC robotics, tablet robotics, augmented reality, virtual reality, 3D printing, virtual coding, and a filming kit. And teachers can pick any one of these kits and implement them into their classroom environment. It gets delivered to the school, the personal training is delivered, and you have the kit for a total of one term. So say, for example, you order a kit and it arrives in week eight of term one, you'll have that kit until week eight of term two. The reason that we divide it up from week eight to week eight is we ensure that teachers and students have the ability to access that kit over the holiday period and they can upskill themselves before it gets implemented in its full capacity in the classroom. The easiest way to get your principal on board is to go to the learning library that's offered by STEM.T4L and they can do that by going through the New South Wales Education Portal. Once they're on there, they can look up helpful videos or even resources that relate to the six different kits that are offered by STEM.T4L. Reach out to us, understand how to make a booking and if the bookings are currently unavailable during that term, jump on the wait list and make sure that you can jump in and get hands on with some of these amazing experiences that are offered by STEM.T4L. Technology for learning. Subscribe now. Jacob, our videographer, is stepping out from behind the camera. He recently headed off to Lord Howe Island with an experimental kit. He took his VR 360 camera. This is what happened. Hello everyone, Jacob here from the T4L team. Here at T4L, we are always on the lookout for remote schools utilising technology in creative ways. It's always so good to have a student's perspective, and on today's episode, we've got a special treat. I want you to say hello to Lord Howe Island Central School. Recently, I was lucky enough to travel to Lord Howe Island with an experimental STEM.T4L kit. Now within this kit, there was 10 360 cameras, a few iPads, and a bunch of different tripods. The students at Lord Howe Island were extremely receptive to the 360 cameras. So using their creativity and local knowledge, they were able to create a variety of really striking 360 degree photos. Now when combined with Google's tour creator, the students are able to map their photos and give anyone around the world a look into their island life. So this is a really wonderful way to explore the geological features and the natural ecology of this UNESCO World Heritage Site from the comfort of absolutely anywhere in the world. And it only took these students two days to shoot, edit and map these photos, which I think is pretty darn impressive. Hmm. Are you thinking you haven't heard about these kits? You need to jump on over to stem.t4l's learning library that's in your portal and check out what they've got on offer today. So once you're done with that, I want you to jump down into the description below. I'm gonna link all of the photos the kids do, chuck on some VR goggles and enjoy the natural beauty of Lord Howe Island from the eyes of their students.
say for all for coming to Lord Howe Island. Well, you know, Yvette, technology is just another tool in a teacher's kit bag. And it was so awesome to see the inspiring curriculum connected ways they can be applied in every classroom. Speaking of other tools, we can hear a bit more about today at... If you've been down to your local Apple store recently, you'll notice there's a huge big screen that makes it look a little bit like a classroom. At every Apple store, there are three different types of learning on offer. There's skills, there's labs, and there's walks. They're great programs to explore, and they cover things like photography, filmmaking, coding, and there's so much more available. Skills, they upskill you with the basic tools to get started with Apple devices and Apple software. Then there's labs, they do a deeper dive where you become a real expert. And finally, there's walks, where you actually implement and use these tools in real life situations. So simply search today at Apple and you can find all the details. Now some of you might have heard that you can take your students or your staff groups into an Apple store as well. Well you can, and these are called field trips. Search Apple field trips and you'll be able to explore how to take your students and staff in for an experience they won't forget. So from one piece of awesome tech to another, it's time to go and visit our resident tech experts as they explore the awesome new Lego spike as we promised. Hi everyone, Greg Tardiani here from t Innovations. I've got a brand new product I want to show you. Anybody who is a Lego fan, and you know that I am, will know how excited I get about Lego. You've got two Lego products at the moment that are really good at robotics in schools, the We Do and the EV3. Between them, Lego has pitched the Lego Spike Prime, this gorgeous yellow coloured device. This is a really, really nice product and the programming language it uses is based on Scratch. So 90% of people that have played with any sort of programming in our schools will be familiar with Scratch. This is a really, really nice tool because the brain or the brick or the programming part of it here connects via Bluetooth. Bluetooth just works out of the box beautifully. To give you an idea of the sensors and the motors that come in it, you get one large motor and two smaller motors. These are all encoded motors so that you can control them really, really nicely. It does come with wheels, but it's primarily aimed at doing bipedal robots and those sorts of things, so things that walk around. Sensors that you get, there is a color sensor and it will also do uh, reflected light, so you can actually do your ambience and reflect it. There is a touch sensor that comes in this. Ultrasonic is always there, really, really good, because then you can imitate bats and flying objects and whales and dolphins, etc. The one thing that is different that takes a little bit to get used to, this particular program works completely from the computer. And I'm going to go get my computer so we can run a program. This one here is ready to go. You need to run it off the program. You've got to connect up here. I am charging it and connecting, so I'm cheating, but it will Bluetooth really well. Press the play button, and depending on how it works, I should be able to bring that in, close, and then out. And the arm will open in a minute, and open and we can go through. Don't try looking for these at the moment. They are not going to be available until early 2020. We hope to be doing some pilots with them shortly with the stem.t for all team. So thanks for coming and hanging out in the lab. Enjoy your company, and uh, we're just going to keep bringing lots and lots of really fun tech to show you. Happy priming. Oh my gosh, Yvette, it's safari time. Tell me more. We're going to go on an AI and machine learning adventure to find out their impact on the classroom. The Data Safari was a jam-packed day where we pulled together academics, teachers and many of our vendors from all over Australia to have a discussion on the uses, ethics and potential for AI and machine learning in the classroom. It was a great insight into the present and future of education. AI sounds futuristic, but really it's something that is already all around us. AI is simply when a computer uses human-like thinking to perform a task. 
Machine learning is a branch of AI when computers analyse patterns within data to make decisions with minimal human intervention. To kick off the safari, we broke off into groups to discuss the impacts of AI in the classroom. This was super insightful and thought provoking. After we had a good idea of some of the key topics surrounding AI in the classroom, we loaded everyone into a bus and visited many of our vendors to have a look at how they are using AI and machine learning already in the tools we use every day. We started our adventure at Google, where we found out that within Google Photos, a simple search for dog or cat reveals the use of AI. Just go and do a search for dog, for example, and you'll find all the pictures that you've got with dogs in it will automatically appear. And if you're after a way to teach your students about AI and machine learning, just look up Teachable Machine. We then jumped on the bus, went for a bit more of a journey, and ended up at our friends Microsoft where we saw how tools like Immersive Reader, which can pull out things like verbs, nouns, adjectives from an everyday document, well, that's machine learning and AI in action. And the next stop on our adventure was AWS, or Amazon Web Services. We learned all about Alexa, and the way that you can build apps for voice, a really cool pit stop. And finally, we made our way to Adobe, and yeah, we've all used Photoshop, we've all used Illustrator, but did you realize in case we didn't notice something called Sensei? Adobe Sensei uses deep machine learning to help speed through ordinarily time-consuming tasks, like editing images in Photoshop with a single click, and so much more. So the Data Safari was a super awesome day that was both inspirational and informative. We'll be using the outcomes and topics from our conversations to explore AI and machine learning in greater detail, both in future episodes of T4L TV and upcoming issues of magazine.t4l. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. And that's a wrap on our intrepid edition of T4L TV. It has been so awesome to have you on this journey with us. We can't wait to see you next time. We have got so much more already in planning just for you. So make sure you tune in for T4L TV.